Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Hello and welcome to the April 12th edition of Basis Loaded with Joe Schmidt. I am Joe Schmidt and this episode, as always, is produced by Paige Driscoll and we are coming to you from the beautiful upper Midwest. Sunny blue skies, 80 degrees. Take that, San Diego. What better way to celebrate than with the latest from the NDPSR report, starting with butter. This butter number coming in at 242.26 is a plus four to the CME one week average of 238.15. Now that is double our normal basis. Butter basis has been running above average as of late, and we were able to obtain that plus four basis with 18 loads trading at the CME. So pretty decent volume on the CME. However, that volume does not translate here to the NDPSR. That higher than expected basis comes at a cost. Buyers unwilling to participate at that level with just a little bit over 3 million pounds here on this week's NDPSR report, certainly well below our expected 3.5 million. So the story in butter is higher than expected basis on lower than expected volume. Next up, cheese. Let's start this week with the block, 202.30. That's a nice price. That is a lower than expected basis. That is under the CME one week average of 202.90, but this is of course after values at the CME ran quickly above that $2 level for one week and then immediately retreated. We traded 14 loads on the CME. This is the high week at the CME. Although it is negative basis, this is a higher price than I was expecting. I was thinking that we would be just marginally higher than last week's and that very little of that 202.90 would get in, but it looks like most of it did get in. Half under is lower than expected, but still a really nice price at the high end of the range. And what's even more impressive is at that elevated level, the manufacturer was able to move north of 13 million pounds. So higher than expected volume on a basis that is below normal, but certainly better than what the pundits would have expected in barrels, 193.96. That's a plus one to the CME two week average of 192.67. So similar to blocks, that 192.67 is the high two week average at the CME that I like to use for barrels. Plus one is a disappointing basis. You know, the barrel typically comes anywhere from four to six over. So lower than expected basis, the run up in barrels was even more violent than the run up in blocks. Barrels moving from the mid 50s, trading up 40 cents higher for a short period of time until the buying frenzy subsided. And then now, as you know, CME prices have moved back where they started in the mid fifties. What's interesting is aged barrels that aren't eligible at the CME were offered in the mid one fifties the whole time on that whole run up to the 195 area. That being said, 193.96 positive one basis is impressive at the high end of the range. Volume here in the barrel above our expected 13 and a half million pounds coming in at 13.8, but certainly a far cry from the 14 and a half, even 16.6 million pound weekly volumes than we experienced on the run up. So lower than expected price in the barrel and on lower than expected volume. Now the big surprise on this report is way 46.06. That is a plus one and a half to the CME one week average of 44.50. We traded five loads on the CME that week. The reason that it is unexpected is because prices at the CME have at this point started to move in the other direction. Here on the NDPSR though, we're still seeing these robust gains over prior week's NDPSR. So these sales that occurred on this report occurred last week. Last week, the prior week's NDPSR was 43.85. So more than a two cent gain over prior week's NDPSR on this week's weigh report. And you'll remember 
that a week ago we had that weigh average you'll see at 45.44 and that also was a two and a half cent gain over prior weeks in the PSR. So we continue to have these two to two and a half cent weekly gains on way. It's really impressive. Uh, similar to the barrels though, as, as prices on the Indy PSR have moved higher, volumes have suffered. You'll remember that when the Indy PSR was in the low 40s, we were trading anywhere from six to six and a half million. Now here for the last two weeks, we've been in this mid four million pound range. So the manufacturer is calling a nice price to this level, but the sales volume has slowed precipitously. And then lastly, non-fat, 120.09. This is a big rebound from last week's NDPSR reported value of 114.81. So call it up five from prior week's NDPSR. They went back and revised last week and took us below that 40 million pound threshold, which is kind of disappointing. Still, I believe it. Last week is our high for the one week sales volume on the NDPSR. You know, we had that big volume last week and we had the big correction in price, probably due to a large flat price export sale. I would assuming that a big parcel of product moved south of the border. It looks like in the 108 neighborhood. Now here we are a week beyond that big purge by the manufacturer as they attempt to get clear and prices move back within the 120 range. So here, if you want to use prior week's NDPSR, this of course is a two cent lower from the March 25th, 122 number. But here at 120, I think that's respectable that we were able to gain five cents on last week's sales average and then still move north of 20 million pounds. So really impressive volume in non-fat and it looks like the manufacturer has done a fine job of staying current. So this is week one of four of the April pricing cycle. We are in our final week of pricing at the CME and if things hold for the remainder of the week, as they settled today, we should probably expect an April class three of 1870 and an April class four of 1834. So we have that normal, almost normal class three, class four relationship with class three trading at a premium. If you carry current CME equivalents all the way out through the entire May pricing cycle, getting a May class three of 1704 and a May class four of 1815. So once again, due to the stubbornness of butter to hold in that 240 neighborhood, we have this outsized class four return trading well above the expected returns for class three processing. It's interesting because that number for class three for May at 1704, if you look at the May futures and especially the June futures, you're talking about a 13 to 15 cent premium futures forward curve. So this is similar to what we had last year in class three. Of course, last year we had robust exports at current price levels. We are probably not competitive with international equivalents. So it would seem at this point that either the class three futures curve is too high or the CME spot is too low. We'll see how they figure it out in the weeks to come. Until then, I am Joe. Thanks, as always, to Paige for producing this episode and the entire EverAg Insights team. Until next week, bye-bye.